does. I like to offer them treats as, as, uh, so they look forward to being handled. Whenever I'm ready to pull a rabbit out of their cage, I'll always offer them a few sunflower seeds from my hand. And that way, they're in the habit of coming to the cage door and uh, accepting me lifting them out. All right, when I'm training babies to accept the blower, I will put the, put the baby here on the table and I, I will hold it so that it doesn't get scared and flip off the table. And I'll turn the blower on to the very lowest setting with the nozzle just facing off to the floor or away from the bunny. And then I will take some treats that the bunny likes, maybe black oil sunflower seeds, or some broken pieces of dried banana chips or uh, dried uh, cranberries, those craisins. And while the blower is running on the lowest setting, then I'll offer the sunflower seeds to the bunny and it will come to associate being groomed with getting treats. That's the theory anyway. Okay, so I've got this five month old buck up here. And before I do any brushing on him, I'm going to use the, the blower on him first because that will minimize the amount of brushing I have to do. And when the brushing is minimized, that means that less fur is pulled out and more of the show coat is preserved. Or if you're a fiber person, more of the prime fiber <coughs> is preserved. him in my lap, with belly up in my lap, and um, I will use the blower on his underside too. One of the things, one of the objectives for using the blower on him today is that we've had a lot of rain lately and there's a lot of humidity, and a lot of humidity has collected in their coats, and when I use the blower on them, it blasts that humidity out of the coat to hold him if I, if I need to have him with his head and ears between my knees. 
I can hold him like that and because I have my feet up on a Rubbermaid tub my knees are elevated which therefore elevates the rabbit's heart and lungs higher than his intestines and sometimes me personally I find this necessary like if I want to clip the the hind uh, claws or sometimes if I really need to get a good look at the fluff on these hind feet or if I need to take my scissors and and trim some soiled wool away from his bottom sometimes for me it's just easier this way and again to hold him the modern way would be like this and um, I can have him on his back or I can let him kind of loll over on his side uh, a lot of them they'll get very comfortable and very relaxed just like this I'll turn him the other direction in case that makes it easier for you to see. You can see I could, if I need to, I can secure his shoulders here with my elbow while I work on his uh, belly. Or if he gets really nice and relaxed and floppy, here fella, here buddy. He can just lay here like this. All right, I am going to use the blower on his belly. And um, I will start it off at a low speed because I don't want to spook him and have him flip out of my lap. So I can see that his coat is still in that transition phase which uh, usually occurs between uh, four and six and a half months where a lot of his old baby fur is falling out and it has a tendency to um, at, at, at the skin it has a tendency to wrap around the mature adult coat that's coming in and it'll web and then the webbing if it's not attended to it will become snarls and mats and it'll felt up and then you you have a coat that is not a good show coat and is worthless for fiber so he's got some webbing here today that I need to work out
the brush I'm using is a doggy man. This is uh, the most popular brand with Angora Rabbit Show people because the bristles are fairly soft and um, are less inclined, uh, less likely to pull out a bunch of wool. And <clears throat> this little brush is maybe two by four inches in size. A lot of folks prefer the larger model that's about five inches by two and a half inches. It's just whatever you're accustomed to, whatever you like to use. So, I am going to start here on his bib area under his chin. And I'm just, I'm just like teasing the surface of this wool. I'm just kind of gently easing into the coat and brushing just a few, just a real thin layer and then advancing and brushing another real thin air layer. I'm not like just raking it across the whole coat. This is just like a, a gentle teasing of the coat. There we've got a little snarl and what I can do, I can pull that apart with my fingers. I'm pulling it sideways and then I'll just kind of flick it out with the slicker brush. This is a very relaxing therapeutic activity for the rabbit groomer. A dear friend of mine said, Lil, no wonder you're so happy. Now I am positioning his, <clears throat> his right um, forearm kind of out of the way so I can reach in between his front legs here on his chest where there's a little webbing. And I'm <clears throat> gently flicking this webbing out. Now one of the reasons why this little bit of webbing is coming out pretty easily is because I, I use the blower on my rabbits almost every day. It would be better if I used the blower each and every day But sometimes I get distracted and I don't get to it like I should. But 
I follow the recommendation by the famous Angora breeder Betty Chu. Betty Chu recommends using the blower every day. She says it should be like brushing your teeth and combing your hair. You blow your rabbit's coats every day. Now, not every leading show breeder recommends that. Linda Casella and Margaret Bartold both find that using the blower once a week suits their needs just fine. But me personally, I find that I can prevent a lot of problems with the coats if I use the blower once a week. So what I will do um, when I follow through on my commitment the way I am supposed to, what I do is use the blower on each show rabbit daily and then I will do the brushing like I'm doing on Threepwood here today. I will brush each rabbit once a week. So I do the blowing daily and the brushing once a week. Now of course we want to minimize how much wool we are pulling out with the brush. And that's one reason why I am using the brush in a, in a gentle manner, kind of teasing this webbing out instead of just yanking on it. You know, you're always going to pull some wool out anyway. You can't, that can't be helped. And fortunately, most of these rabbits from the contemporary show bloodlines have plenty more fur where that came from. But, <clears throat> you know, if you figure, um, if you figure maybe like you're preparing for a big show in six months, that would be, you know, about, um, 25 weeks and if you're brushing the rabbit once a week then that's 25 brushings that your rabbit is getting and if you were to keep all of the wool that you pull out with your brush or your comb from those 25 weeks and look at it you might think you removed enough wool for a whole nother rabbit there. Now for here on his foreleg, I'm going to switch to this smaller brush like this. This little, um, oh, two by one inch brush. I'm very pleased here. This is going really well.
Now you'll want to be very careful when you brush the paws because an English Angora is required to have wool on their paws. And it's not unusual for there to be some pilling and snagging of the wool here between their toes. And if you pull too much of it out and then you put them on the show table, they might be disqualified for not having wool on the front paws. I've seen that happen. Here I'm using this flea comb on this really fine fur on the paws. All right, now going to the other side of his four quarters. I see that he's gotten a little poop here on this on this uh, paw. <clears throat> Lots of times with English Angoras, um, as you know, all rabbits produce uh, what we call night feces, which which are uh, feces that are kind of soft and come out in like grape-like clusters. And those night feces, the rabbit will usually eat those night feces because they contain enzymes that assist digestion. Well, these English angoras quite often will miss a few and those night feces will get smeared all over their fur and quite often they'll get it up here on their shoulders. I don't know how they do that, but they do. And so sometimes it's easier just to take the little Fisker scissors here and just trim that off. Okay, now when I look at his left in here, I see some webbing in here around his elbow and so I am going to have to work that out. What I'm going to do first, I'm going to take my fingers and just gently pull that webbing apart. Here buddy, it tickles so he's inclined to kind of jerk a little bit there. And I'll secure his ears between my knees to help hold him still. <laughs> he's like, Ma, that tickles. I'm sorry, bud. When I'm done with this part, I will give him a break and some treats. But maybe it's good that he's wriggling around a little bit because it'll show you how to handle it if the rabbit doesn't want to be totally cooperative. But bless his heart, it tickles. Okay, so I've gotten that mostly pulled apart. Let's see, here's some more. And he's, he's not happy with me. It tickles. Oh, I'm so sorry, buddy. Okay. Now something else that will work with that sometimes is to take your Take your scissors that you're using for trimming. Now, I'm not going to be cutting. I don't want to cut on this. But what I'm going to do, it, just to show you one method, I will take the tips of these scissors and slide them in under the snag and then just kind of use it to tease the snag out. I'm not cutting the snag, I'm just 
teasing it out. I could also do that with my big wide tooth comb. Just gently tease some of that out. And that feels to me like maybe that's pulling a little too much and I don't want to be pulling on him. So I'm going to go back to using this small slicker brush and I'll start at the very tips of this wall where, where that big snag is or that big area of webbing is. And I'm going to start at the tips and open the tips up and then work work down down the length of the fiber you see this grooming an English Angora rabbit is a very zen kind of thing to do. It's very zen. It's very meditative. It's the kind of thing that you should do with the state of mind that you're totally here. You're totally in the present with this bunny and gently working these little bits of webbing out are the only thing that matter. Nothing else matters. And you're not judging your work here. You're just being kind to yourself, being patient, The only way to do this wrong would be not to do it at all. I'm going back over the same little section of wall over and over to remove those bits of webbing. If I do this right now, if I do it correctly now, then it may not need to be done again for a few weeks, if at, if at all, because he's already uh, five and a half months old and pretty soon he'll be through the transition period where he transitions from baby to senior coat. Okay, I feel like I need to give him a break now. He's been awfully patient. He may even need to pee. So I am going to set him back up there on the table and give him some sunflower seeds and just let him relax. I could even put him back in his own cage for a while. Okay, three put has had a break. And he's had a treat. So I'm going to go back and finish working on his elbow here, cleaning this webbing out. It already looks a lot better. Now I want to make clear. I am no expert on rabbit grooming. I, I think um, <clears throat> probably the best 
rabbit groomer, bar none, would be Betty Chu. And the reason I say that is because last year at the ARBA convention, I helped, I helped write comments along with uh, Karen Bailey. And so I was sitting there right beside the judging table and I could look right at each rabbit while the judge, Alan Misik, made his comments and every one of Betty Chu's rabbits he mentioned <clears throat> how fresh the coat looked. But, you know, she's been doing, she's been doing this since the 80s. <laughs> I didn't get my first Angora rabbit until 1992 and um, I had them for about 10 years and then, then in 2002 um, my family and I had other interests and so I gave all of my rabbits to a good friend who who's had uh, Angora rabbits probably for as long as Betty's had them. My friend um, Shree Olson, and Shree is primarily a fiber person. She's always maintained her herd of English Angoras for the fiber, and she spins and knits. I always said that I would come back to Angora Rabbits when I was ready to retire. And so last fall, I retired and I, I went to the convention because it was down in Wichita, Kansas, which is only about a three hour drive for me and I brought home three Angora rabbits. I'm very pleased here. I He's cleaned up very nicely around his elbows and his chest. I can show you how much wool came off here in my hand is the fur that I brushed out of those snarls and, and webbing that he had around his elbows. And yet to look at the rabbit, <laughs> you'd never know it. Um, there, was pl there was plenty more where that came from, but even so, this is why I won't brush every day. You know, if I were to pull this much out every day, um, I'd have a naked rabbit before too long. Okay, I am going to brush up here on his face, the, the, these, um, on his cheeks. He's got some webbing here on his cheeks.
that's a particular problem with bucks. Bucks rub their faces, they rub their chins on stuff to mark it. And when they do that, they tend to make little spots on their on their fluffy cheeks web up or snarl and mat. But this is brushing out nicely. I will do the other side. Kind of got a, he's kind of got a big fat old chunk of felt there on his muzzle. See if I can get that eased out of there. Just slightly flicking at it, flick, 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 flick. And the thing is, I don't want to do just the surface. You know, I could fake it. I could just like fluff out the surface of that mat and if you just looked at him you would think oh yeah you know that rabbit doesn't have any mats but then when you would go to feel it you would feel that kind of hard chunk of fur in there felted fur so and this tickles he He's letting me know that it tickles. This is coming out nicely. Now this is kind of one of the characteristics, again, of the modern bloodlines that have been bred for the extreme show coats. It's not just that they grow long and thick but that they're also easier to care for and maintain than the rabbits who haven't been selected for good coats. You know, this is, this is really brushing out nicely. This, this was not hard to do. Now I'm going to take my wide tooth comb and make sure that I've got that mat removed. As long as I'm going to this this much trouble, I might as well make sure that, that mat's not going to come right back. we go. There. We had kind of a nasty mat there and now it's gone. Okay, I'm going to let him sit up and have a little bit of a break here. Hey, buddy. Here, have a treat. I'm letting, I'm, I'm feeding him uh, some black oil sunflower seeds with my fingers giving him a treat, rewarding him for being so patient with me. I'm going to let him just sit up here and relax for a little bit. What a good boy. As long as he's upright here, I'll brush his forelock out.
He's got some pilling on the ends of his forelock. So I've got to flick those out. Turn him so you can kind of see what I'm doing better here. Flick those little bit of pilling out. Just flicking it out. Not yanking it, not pulling it. Just flick, 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 flick. Here, buddy. Stay where people can see what you're doing. Here, bud. Turning this way a little more. Okay, come back here and flick away on these hind paws again. Now if I were getting this rabbit ready to go to a show. I would do this brushing the day before the show. If, if I had to do this brushing on the day of the show, I would feel I would feel too pressured. I would be worried about having the rabbit brushed in time to get onto the show table when the breed was called. So this, this really deep grooming like this I would rather do the day before the show or maybe even two days before the show. And then all I would have to do at the show itself would be a little touch up. Okay, he's got some dried manure here, um, and, and, and most of this I'm just going to clip off the tips. I'm not going to make him miserable by, by trying to brush all of this dried manure out of his fur. I'm just going to clip it off. This is on the inside of his hind legs. It's, it's not going to... Um, it's not going to, you know, trimming that off isn't going to affect the judge's opinion of him at a show. So, rather than make him miserable and, you know, try to work all that out with the brush, I'm just going to trim it with these little Fisker scissors. My friend Kelly Flating, I think, expressed it very well when she said, as a courtesy to the judges, she likes to keep the rabbit's hindquarters trimmed because she thinks it just must be much more pleasant for the judge when they pick up an English Angora and they turn it over to check its vent and genitalia and everything and it, it just must be a lot nicer when that rabbit has a nice clean trimmed butt than to be presented with a butt that's all matted and shaggy and nasty.
let him have a treat. Feeding him a couple sunflower seeds with my fingers. Okay. Now I I brushed out his bangs earlier. And I'll kind of flick at them again. Now what I want to do is have a look here behind his ears on his neck. They tend to web up behind the ears there. So brush away at that. Now here behind their neck is usually if, if they're going to develop a case of fur mites or wool mites it's going to be here it'll show up here behind their neck first. If they start going bald here behind the neck or if the skin here behind the ears and on the neck starts looking red and rashy that's an indicator that you've got a case of wool mites developing. It, it's just endemic with Angora rabbits. It's just part of having Angora rabbits. It's nothing to be ashamed of or embarrassed of. The only time you should be ashamed of or embarrassed about wool mites is if, is if you don't treat it. Now some people will give um, small prophylactic doses like maybe every six to eight weeks just to prevent fur mites from getting started and and I like to do that too. I, I like for the not to even let it get get started. Preserve as much wool, keep that coat as nice as possible both for the show table and for fiber. Okay after brushing him out behind the neck then maybe I want to take my wide tooth comb and comb on that too because this fur right behind the ears on the neck tends to be very fine and it tends to want to snarl up really easily. So after I've brushed it, then I want to comb it too. And he's really he wants to bounce around and explore and look things over. He's not real patient here about being on my lap. So some of my rabbits just go to sleep on my lap and a few of them are a little less patient. He's one of the less patient ones. Hey buddy. Hey. Hey. Okay. Now I'm going to put him back up on the table and because um, I think he'll be more comfortable up there while I brush his top side. The only time that I will brush the wool on the top side is at a show. I want to preserve this wool on the top side both for the show table and for fiber. I want to preserve as much of this density as possible. So I don't ever brush this top side at home. I will brush it at the show just to separate these fibers and pump this coat out and and make it look impressive for the judging. Um, but Angora, ready to show. Oh, <laughs> now he's going to give himself a bath.